According to the Chief Deputy Registrar, when Candler County did their audits for the previous election, there were zero discrepancies and everything was 100% accurate. This has been Abby Chosewood with Eagle News. Welcome back to Wildcast, guys. Hope you're doing well out there. I'm your host, Rod. And in this video, we're going to be moving completely away from politics and talking about a very bare bones criminal case coming out of Georgia. And that is because the woman on the screen right now, Abby Chosewood, has been accused of assaulting a one year old child or baby, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the case here is very two sided, meaning that both sides have a uphill climb to uh, make at trial if they want to beat the other side. And uh, it's very unlikely given her actions or her described actions that she will take a plea deal. So this case is most likely headed to trial. And uh, I'm sure people will be paying attention to it when it happens. It's still starting up. She was barely arrested a couple of days ago. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be explaining what both sides are going to struggle with and what both sides have in their favor and what is going to be the determinative factor that determines determines whether she walks free or not. Okay. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you guys what I think. My opinion is very uninformed at this point because we haven't heard at all from the defense side. So I have no idea what her lawyers are going to say. We've only heard from the police and the police case is not as strong as, uh, I think they would like it to be, okay? Uh, because there are a lot of holes in, her, in their case, but then she has a problem too, a big problem uh, that we have to address as well. So we're gonna be talking about both sides. I'm gonna be completely based on the facts. I'm not really gonna offer any opinions other than a pure legal analysis based on the law. And we're gonna start out by looking at the actual laws that she has been accused of violating. So Law & Crime here had a decent article on her case, and they actually had an interview with the, uh, police department, one of the people from the police department, a lieutenant here, Kevin Holbrook, who spoke to them and explained what he could, uh, because this is an ongoing investigation, there's a lot of things that are under seal until the court case is over, so he can only say so much, but he gave some basic information about her and what happened here. Basically, the child was found to be injured in this area, and it looked like he was strangled. Uh, he or she, we don't know the gender, um, but uh, they were strangled and somehow uh, prevented from breathing for at least some time time and they were near death. That's what he says. Okay. Those are the medical facts that we know. We don't know uh, as much as I would like to know, like the specifics of the injuries and whether they could have been accidental. The police do not believe that they could be accidental. And that's why they've charged her after looking at who could have had contact with the baby or the one-year-old um, and who could possibly be responsible. Okay. So we'll talk about that more later, but Abby here has been accused of two different felonies in this case, felony cruelty to children and felony aggravated assault. Okay, so those are the two laws that we're going to be looking at here. And the uh, the felony cruelty to children is unclear which degree it is because the depending on the degree, she faces a variety of uh, lowering prison times. So the first degree cruelty to children in Georgia, you can face up to five to 20 years. 20 years being the max, uh, and second degree is lower, uh, one to 10 years, and the cruelty to children in the third degree in, according to Georgia law, only carries one to three years in prison, and given that this is her first accusation here, if she's convicted on this, then she will be downgraded from a felony to misdemeanor. If it's your first or second conviction, then that will be treated as a misdemeanor. So this is a very low charge. She will most likely end up getting probation, because like I said, the police have a very weak case, at at least as of right now. We'll, I'll explain to you guys how the police can strengthen their case at trial. So we don't know which uh, degree that she's been charged with because we don't even have the indictment yet. Uh, the police have general charges, but the prosecutors have not put out the indictment officially as far as I've seen. So the police charge you generally before the trial, but the prosecutors officially indict people from with a grand jury and arrest them and go through the whole arraignment and everything. And that's basically how it works in Georgia. And so we don't have the indictment yet. They've arrested her. The judge let her out on bail, which is also not a good indication for the police because if she was as dangerous a criminal as they're making her out to seem, then she would have been incarcerated before trial. And the judge didn't do that. She's out on bail. She's at home. And if the prosecutors cannot convince the judge that she's a danger to the community, then that's when she, that's when the judge, he or she, lets uh, the defendant out on bail. 
Now let's move on to the second charge, uh, elements of aggravated assault. Aggravated assault is what, what she's been charged with. And this is a big problem for the police. And most likely they're not going to be able to get a conviction on this um, because they have no idea what the motive for this so-called attack was. If it actually happened, they have no idea what the motive was. Why in this world? And I can't imagine why she would beat up, beat up or strangle this uh, one-year-old kid. Okay. She was babysitting for one of uh, a, fa a family friend. Basically, she was a family friend to the one-year-old's family. So unless there is some reason there, a logical reason why she would attack the kid, there's no motive. The police admits in this interview, the, the guy here, the lieutenant here, admits that they have no idea why, why she did this. They hope to find out at trial. They did have at least one interview with her, according to him, and they didn't get much information from her, according to what he said. And so they have no idea what the motive was. And that's a big problem because the elements of aggravated assault, according to Georgia law and jurisprudence here, according to cases like Harper v. State uh, from 1972, they have to establish intention. So the first element is that an assault happened. That's actus reus. They have to establish that a, that a, there's a victim who was assaulted. And the second element is that it was aggravated by an intention to murder, to rape or to rob or use a deadly weapon. So they have to find, obviously these don't apply. The murder part might apply because they said that the the, the baby was close to death. So they're going to have to uh, find some kind of intention to prove at trial. Intentionality is a very important element of aggravated assault. And they don't have anything about why, why they're saying, they've concluded according to the medical evidence that she's assaulted this one-year-old. Uh, her side most likely is going to argue that it was an accident or that it was uh, something that she didn't had nothing to do with and that it didn't happen when she was there. We'll get to her defenses here in a second. But anyways, um, we're going through the law right now. And this is the law in Georgia uh, when it comes to these charges. The first charge, they might be able to get her on that. But the second charge is most likely she's going to be acquitted if they go to trial. So now that we have some of the uh, key details about what she's been accused of and the specific charges against her and the story of the assault, um, let's get to talking about what might happen at trial, okay? Like I said, she seems like somebody who's not going to take a plea, uh, at least as of right now. She's been very resistant with the police, and that might be because she's innocent or that might be because she's an arrogant criminal. We can never know, okay? But let's go over the legal technicalities that will come up at trial and what both sides will have to prove and what the problems for both sides are. Okay, so the police will have to prove her intent when it comes to the second charge of aggravated assault. In the in the first one, if they go for first degree uh, child abuse or uh, ch cruelty to children, which carries a potential 20 year sentence, then they're going to have to have a lot of convincing evidence to prove that. They're going to have to prove that it was not an accident, that it was not uh, somebody else who did it, which most likely is going to be one of the defenses used by the defense uh, lawyers. Um, they're going to have to disprove all of that. And narrow down the potential schedule of when and who had access to the to the one-year-old i'm just gonna call it a baby uh wh who had access to the baby and that she was the only potential person that could have hurt the baby they're gonna have to prove that to beyond a reasonable doubt at trial that's gonna be difficult okay because depending on who was going in and out of the house depending on uh what, what the medical evidence says when the assault happened it will be very difficult to narrow down that that uh corridor of time when the assault happened and when did the parent discover the assault how how old were the bruises and the injuries because the kid can't tell you anything it's a one-year-old they don't even know they probably don't can't speak at all uh i don't really know babies that well i don't care but nevertheless um the the there's not going to be a cooperating uh victim so they're gonna have to rely on other forms of evidence to prove this cruelty to children charge which is going to be difficult okay unless they ha and they have there's no nanny cameras there's no photographs there's no recordings of any kind and it seems like they don't even have any witnesses uh, like secondhand witnesses where she told somebody that she assaulted the kid doesn't seem like anybody has come forward so that's a very very hard case right now unless the police are hiding the witnesses and they have a really good witness, then it might be a good case for them, but I doubt it. I don't think she told anybody, and I don't, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to my opinion in, in, the, in the end of the video. I don't wanna taint uh, the legal analysis here. So the police are gonna have to prove with the first uh, charge here, the cruelty to children charge, they're gonna have to prove that she was the only person who had access to the kid and the only person that could have possibly hurt her because her parents could have done it, somebody else could have done it, it could have been an accident. These are all things the defense attorneys are gonna use and the police are gonna have to completely dis dispatch those arguments and prove that she was the only one who had the means and the opportunity to hurt the child. 
from a legal perspective, that's what they're going to have to prove at trial. That's going to be difficult. So those are some of the weaknesses for the police. Uh, the strength of the police comes from the medical evidence. Uh, according to what the police officer described here in this interview, the case was started because the people at the hospital suspected that there was some kind of abuse when the baby was bought, brought into the uh, the hospital and they're the ones who complained to the police and that's how the investigation get, got started. So the strongest part of the police's argument is going to be the medical professionals who are going to be testifying that they believe that there was some kind of intentional abuse but the prosecutors are still going to have to prove that that intentional abuse came from her because there are many other people who had access to this baby including the parents. So the defense is going to blame everybody else and the police are going to have to convince the jury that no the medical professionals say that she it was intentional that somebody did it and like we like we talked about before they're going to have to narrow it down to her the the schedule the access to the baby at means and opportunity had to be narrowed down to prove intention okay to hurt the baby and to prove that she's the one who did it even if she, if the baby was intentionally hurt which is what the medical evidence will uh, most likely establish that they the police will still have to prove the prosecutors will still have to prove that she's the one who did it you can't just generally say that a crime was committed you have to specifically prove that the accused cr criminal or the defendant is the one who did it that is the burden of the prosecutors beyond a reasonable doubt which is a very high standard at trial now let's get to the defense okay strengths of the defense the prosecution lacks any physical evidence to point to her no cameras no photos no text messages or emails as far as i can see right now that might change in the future if the prosecutors have that they might get more difficult for them but as of right now they have nothing okay no evidence pointing to her directly all they have is the fact that the medical professionals are saying that somebody intentionally hurt this kid according to the injuries and everybody's saying that she's the one who did it the parents are obviously the, the parents most likely were not home the day it happened because she was doing babysitting for them but that does not mean that the injuries couldn't happen afterward or before and the parents are lying so her defense attorneys are going to blame a whole bunch of people including the parents and say that we didn't do it if somebody did it, it must have been the parents or it must have been the uncle it must have been the aunt you know the defense always blames somebody they have to they're that they're trying to defend their client and the police are supposing based on the scheduling that they have based on their investigation they investigated this for months by the way so credit to them for their hard work uh, but I don't think they have enough to get a conviction yet, okay? They're going to have to have some kind of witnesses or emails or text messages, something to prove to the jury that she's the one who did it and she knows she did it. That's proving intent, okay? They're going to have to prove, uh, they're going to have to find some kind of motive and point the finger directly at her. The hardest part for the defense is going to be the fact that they don't have anybody else to blame regarding the time that the baby was left with Abby Chosewood. So if the injuries, if the prosecution can prove that the injuries happened in this period of time when nobody else was there or very few people were around and Abby's the one who was with the baby, then Abby chose to decide uh, her lawyers are going to have a difficult time pointing the finger at somebody else because she was the only one with the kid. So if the medical evidence is clear enough to point to a, a specific period of time where she's the only one who was there, then it's going to be very difficult for the defense to blame somebody else because she was the only one there. And the medical evidence is clear enough to the point where they can point to a specific a period of time where the injuries happened and the jury's going to have to buy that. Okay, So it's going to have to be very convincing evidence. And so there's going to probably going to be competing doctors testifying. Uh, doctors from the prosecution side is going to say from the hospital where they went that the injuries happened in this period of time. And then the defense is probably going to have at least one doctor to dispute the medical evidence from the prosecution. And they're going to say that no, these injuries could happen in a broader area of time and therefore you can't blame my client she's not the only person who had access to the baby there are many other people who had contact so it's most of this is going to come down to the medical evidence what the jury finds most convincing who which expert the defense expert or the prosecution's expert that they find convincing okay so that's i think that's going to be the crux of the the trial if this goes to trial and it's looking like it will but the bottom line is the reason this uh case is interesting is because both sides don't have a slam dunk case and they both have big problems okay depending on what the police have and depending on what arguments the defense makes both of them right now have big problems proving both of their cases at trial okay so with the legal analysis completed now let's get to my own opinion okay so i don't have a strong opinion on this case because I don't know this person. What I've seen is a couple of videos of her speaking. She's an aspiring reporter. She does not seem like somebody who would 
try to choke a baby to death, which is essentially what the police are saying, okay? But that doesn't really mean anything. You can't tell uh, from purely their personality alone what they're going to be like psychopaths can trick people into thinking that they're very kind and normal and uh, in private they're going to do violent things or messed up things to other people that's how people are and sociopaths are actually even worse in this respect than psychopaths but this girl does not come off anything like that she seems like somebody who just got out of college and is looking to build her life she doesn't come off as somebody who would de do this kind of stuff to a, to a one-year-old baby so uh, it's very doubtful, in my opinion, that the jury's going to think that she's some kind of monster. But hey, that could just be my own bias. So like I said, I don't have a strong opinion here. If the evidence is strong enough, it doesn't matter how she comes off. The jury will convict her. So the jury are not going to be swayed by how people look, meaning their demeanor, like whether they look like nice people or not, whether they look beautiful or not. That doesn't really, most juries are not tricked by that. Okay, there's some times where that happens, where juries are taken by people and their charisma and the criminals are, are able to get away that happens sometimes most of the time they all get shut down and put in prison so because this is a very interesting case i will be following this uh case even though this is a local case in georgia it's very interesting from a legal perspective i, I want to see what happens here and if you guys want me to do updates on this let me know in the comment section if videos get uh, a high response meaning that people want me to actually do videos on it and spend my time on it which i don't have much free time anymore so i don't do videos unless uh people I like them and are going to watch them. Otherwise, I'm just wasting my time making videos like this. So let me know in the comment section if you want to follow up in this video. But anyways, I will be following up at least one more time in this case uh, going forward just to see what happens. And personally, I will be following it to see what happens because it's an interesting legal case from a purely legal perspective. But anyways, we'll see what happens. Uh, that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to keep current with the videos that I'm making. And if you have been watching for a long time and appreciate my content and the time that I put into these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I post all the legal documents I use in my videos on Patreon for my patrons. I also post extra legal content when I don't have time to make videos on Patreon for my patrons. As a patron, you can also contact me directly on Patreon to request a video or ask a question about a relevant topic. These are all privileges that I provide for my patron supporters. With all that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a very nice day.